And there was high drama in the courtroom of the Michael Jackson child molestation trial as the mother of Jackson's accuser took the stand. She did not answer questions about welfare fraud and perjury, but her emotional testimony revolved around the charge that Jackson falsely imprisoned her and her three children. Joining us now is former New York State Prosecutor Lisa Pinto, along with criminal defense attorney Ann Bremner. Good morning to both of you. Good, Good morning, morning, Amy. And uh, I'm going to begin with you, Lisa, and I want to ask you that I, I heard one analyst say this testimony was so incredible that it was actually credible from her allegations of, of, of feeling trapped and these death threats to apparently mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, she says, licking her child's head. What do you make of her credibility? Well, I think this mother, like the 93 accuser's mother, has a lot of baggage. But I don't think any of that detracts from the children's credibility. And their credibility is the one at issue here. In fact, the reason that these, because these women are so grasping and have such poor boundaries in terms of their mothering, allowing their children to be in these strange situations, not removing a child from a man who's, who she's seen lick his head, I think that is why these kids were vulnerable, both in 93 and in 2000. Three. But whether or not the welfare fraud, these are allegations at this point, nothing's been proven, we don't know what support she was getting and whether or not she was entitled to welfare. The fact was this was a woman who sold out her kids for the good life. And I think if anything that just corroborates the prosecution's theory that Michael Jackson was alleged to be a pedophile who took advantage of vulnerable kids. And let me ask you this about the mother pleading the fifth. How do you think that weighs with the testimony that we heard? Do you think that really affects her credibility in the eyes of the jury? I do because what we heard right before, and I've been in the courtroom throughout the trial, and right before her taking the fifth, her husband talked about her welfare payments and she had income from him, she had other income, she had bank accounts he didn't know about, etc. And then the judge told the jury that she was taking the Fifth Amendment as to welfare fraud and perjury. And we're going to hear in this case about false claims by her of family practicing the art of deception and her having her children lie in court proceedings, including a claim against J.C. Penney's and during the course of a divorce. You know, so, I mean, she is driving the bus and the children are on board, and this is very serious because she's the centerpiece in many ways of the prosecution's case. Well, you know, and it's so interesting. You're always the one saying these are allegations. This is unproven at this point. We don't have, this woman does not have a criminal record at this point. This is just Mesereau throwing more dirt at every witness that comes up on the stand. We've had 10 people testify, who he's, and he says they're all crooks and liars. You have to buy that all these 10 people are willing to risk perjury, defamation, for to believe that Michael Jackson did not commit these crimes. I mean, and here I am defending a woman's innocence. It's sort of an irony. And ah. Let me ask you about Tom Mesereau, because Tom Mesereau mm -hmm. did nothing during this testimony. Typically, That's right. him object to a lot of things. What's his strategy here, staying quiet until cross-examination? Because, because she, right now, she's volunteering all kinds of bizarre things about killers, about being falsely imprisoned, but she's in a nail salon, you know, about coming back and forth to Neverland, escaping in a white Rolls Royce from Michael Jackson. And she, sometimes she'll just volunteer things like, oh, and guess what? Or, you know, very strange testimony. In a way, he's just letting her do this in a way to kind of hang herself, and then he'll come back on cross-examination. You know, what he's been able to do with a lot of these witnesses is to show demonstrably they've lied under oath before, they've made false claims, some have sued Michael Jackson. This case is full of dubious characters. It is what it is. But and he's, he's been able to show on cross-examination of many witnesses that they have credibility problems, Amy, and that's his Amy. job. Go this ahead, Lisa. Is Michael Jackson surrounds himself with these people, ex-security guards from Caesar's Palace, the Germans, the unindicted co-conspirators. He surrounds himself with these characters because that's how he gets away with what's alleged in this case in the 93 and in the past. But the, I mean, the bottom line here is Michael Jackson wanted to keep the kids on the ranch, not the mom. Remember when they were flying back from Miami, he tried to get her to fly separately and she had to beg him to let her be with her children. I don't think the mother's freedom to leave was ever an issue. It was the children, he would not let them off the ranch. And that's corroborated by Jesus Salas, by Chris Carter, by other people. And we have Bob Jones telling us that he saw the defendant lick a little boy. So it's not like well, the mother's what, coming out of left field here, Ann. No, no, but he didn't testify to that. He, he couldn't remember it. And then he said maybe he said it. And the right, white Rolls Royce escape was with the children. So I think this is a case that, you know, if you can compare it to art, it's like a Picasso painting. There's an eye over here, you know, and something else over here. The state has the burden of proof in this case and it is a bizarre bizarre case and she even pointed the mother pointed at Michael Jackson and said those are the killers but so the, 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 the jurors the <laughs> jurors have a tough case you may not understand it but it makes sense 
We are out of time, girls. Very interesting. Isn't we it? We appreciate your time. Ann Bremner, Lisa Pinto, thanks for being with us this morning. Thanks. And thanks, Lisa.